Spicy take. Evangelion is good. The monsters, the story, the characters, the way it rips apart your standard mecha narrative and pieces it back together is a dark take on Ultraman. Everything comes together to create an anime that's damn near perfect. It's easy to see why so many people have fallen in love with the story of a boy who just wanted a little attention from all the wrong people. And you know what comes with success? Rip-offs. Or, uh, perhaps homages. The only real difference is whether or not it's good. I'm Click Diggums, and today we're looking at an anime that walks that line, for better or for worse. Better Man. Better Man, no relation to Pearl Jam or those assholes from the Croods, is a 1999 anime produced by Sunrise, the studio that made Gundam, Cowboy Bebop, and, uh, Valve Rave. It's technically a sequel to Gal Gygar, but that's not obvious in the show itself, so, you know, don't worry about it. It's also the first TV anime to be broadcast in widescreen, so it's technically historically important. As for what it's about... Uh... Bear with me here. This gets complicated. So there's this kid. Keita Aono. Typical nerdy, horny high schooler. One day, a new student comes to his school. Her name's Hanoki Sai. She has cool hair and a dark past. How dark? Her family's dead and she's childhood friends with Keita. Poor girl never had a chance. Kate is thinking about this bizarre coincidence when he accidentally crashes into an underground theme park on his way home from school. Inside the park, monsters are going nuts, everything's three spooky five me, real bad time. Kata runs around a bit and meets Sakura Akamatsu, a psychic strapped in a chair. He then runs around a bit more and finds a cool robot. And inside the robot... It's Anoki! Oh wow, who saw that? Saw that coming, wow, that's, that's a crazy twist, right? Wow. wow. Turns out Hanoki is something called a dual kind. Dual kinds are people who can link their brain to another person's specific rim style to pilot the robot, which is called a neuronoid. And the dual kinds can only run the neuronoid when they're connected by a linker gel, which is a limited power source that runs out when the plot needs more drama. And none of this has anything to do with Better Men. They're humanoids who transform into cool dragons when they eat the seed of the animus flower. Except this one. She's a moth eagle thing for some reason. There's also a virus called Algernon going around which drives people crazy, and trying to figure out exactly how it works will drive you crazy. That's all in the first episode. See the problem with this anime yet? Better Man is like a little kid telling you a story. Things get thrown at you left and right, and all of it's in the wrong order, so all you can do is buckle up and soak it all in. Whenever Better Man stops to actually explain something, the explanation always comes too late, which grinds the pacing to a halt. Most of the deep lore is more confusing than shocking, and almost all the characters are flat as a board. Nerdy teen, tsundere, choir girl with weird powers, gung-ho commander, mysterious scientist, they're all stock archetypes, and they don't get much of a chance to grow beyond their factory set roles. But hey, on the bright side, there's a girl that looks like Kamen Rider Amazon, so at least you'll make a friend. And there's a ninja. This is a real show. Now's the part where you're probably asking, Click my man. If the story's not sensical and the characters are ass, why bother watching this? Well, there is a lot to like. The mechs are cool, the dragons are cool, and the action sequences are usually well choreographed. The random events plot also means you have no clue what's coming next, which keeps things from getting stale. The monsters of the week come in all different shapes and sizes, and a couple of them are legitimately pretty spooky. Yeah, they're no angels, but the fact that they're so unpredictable means you get a sense that you're never really safe. Somehow, through some plot contrivance you do not understand, somebody's got Algernon and they're trying to kill you. And if you can't figure out the super specific way to stop them, game over, man. Game over. There's also a pretty good subplot exploring what the hell a better man actually is. Spoilers, there's more than one, and they fight. It's not perfect, but it's more interesting than what our stock characters are getting up to at the time. Speaking of them, remember when I brought up Evangelion? And how the show was a ripoff? Let's go through those characters again. Nerdy teen. Sundere. Quiet girl with weird powers. Gung-ho commander. Mysterious scientist. Oh, and there's also the best friend, the support team, the shifty science man, the shady organization that's our only hope at stopping an unpredictable threat. Yeah, okay, a lot of these are archetypes, and I'll give you that Keita and Shinji are actually pretty different, but there's also the tone to consider. Better Man and Ava both have a serious, oppressive atmosphere. There are comic relief characters and moments of levity, but behind all that there's always something darker happening. People scheme against each other. People withhold information. People go mad. Maybe it's because they're both 90s anime, but Evangelion ended in 1997 and this show came out in 1999. 
plenty of time to notice all that mad Ava money and want a piece of it. And then there's the way that Better Man tries to tell its story. Evangelion's story is dense. Any frame can potentially contain foreshadowing. Every line can help explain a character's motivation. On the first watch, a lot of these moments get missed, which can make the plot seem more confusing than it actually is. Better Man tries to copy this, and on a surface level it kinda works. A bunch of crazy stuff happens, get a little explanation, the main mystery advances an inch, more crazy stuff happens. Mission complete, yeah? No. Here's the thing about Ava. When you go back and watch it again, almost everything was planned out beforehand. Instrumentality is brought up as early as episode 2. In that same episode, the Avas are basically confirmed to be organic under the armor. Episode 4 hints at Rey not being a regular human being. These are things you didn't catch because they didn't seem important, but they were always there. It all adds up to a cohesive story. Better Man doesn't understand that. Every couple of episodes, the action stops so the characters can babble on about what happened in the last arc. But these explanations don't always fit with what we've seen. These monsters? Uh, yeah, they're actually robots. Amazon, the mystical jungle girl? She's actually a science. And the Ninja Scroll wannabe isn't a better man. He's got mystical powers nobody else on Earth has because... He's over 100, I guess? Psychics? And the Neuronoids run on dolphins? Except for the ones that are people? Wait, Organic Mega, where have we seen that before? All these rapid-fire plot points come across as the writers desperately trying to justify cool set pieces after the fact. It feels like there's no plan, which sucks, because you can tell there was a plan. When Better Man actually lands a twist, it feels earned. There's one that I honestly think should stand alongside Ava's twist when it comes to making you ask questions about things you took for granted. But there are just too many times where you get a 10 minute monologue that feels like it was thrown together after a bender. Turns out, the guy who wrote half of this show also wrote five episodes of Ava. Yeah, maybe that's why Better Man feels so similar, but you'd think a writer who actually worked on Ava would be able to grasp its nuances. Nah, yeah, well, can't knock it out of the park every time. Better Man's got its flaws, but somebody saw enough potential on it to port it to America. It aired on Tech TV's Anime Unleashed block with a complete dub, which switched the opening and ending songs for some reason. Honestly? That was a good move. You know how most openings are. And most endings are. Well, Better Man's opening is. And the ending goes like. Come on, Better Man, step it up. The rules were in place way before you got here. In addition to playing on TV, the dub got ported to the DVD. The series dropped in six volumes released from 2002 to 2004, and a complete collection released in both 2004 and 2006. As far as I could tell, the individual DVDs are pretty easy to find, but the complete collections are a bit of a pain to track down. Supposedly Sentai has the rights, but they're not doing anything with it. You can watch it on Amazon in certain countries. Maybe. And there's always... My way. Yeah. And for the super fans who can speak weep, there's a 20th anniversary Blu-ray floating around. Eh, it seems kind of expensive, but it comes with an art book and some Galgagar stuff, so... Yay! Cash grabs. Well. Now, for the million dollar question. Did Better Man have any real impact? Does it have tons of fans? Is it important to anime? Eh. I mean, the girls get a lot of attention, both through official merchandise and garage kits, but that's not really surprising. Somehow, Hinoki got a figure in 2022, and Better Man himself is getting a statue that's been vibing in a garage somewhere for 20 years? I guess? The description feels like it's missing a couple key details. Also, despite being made by Sunrise, the Neuronoids never got a model kit of any kind, which is a damn shame. They actually look pretty cool. And other than that statue, there's not really any merch of Better Man himself, which is weird. He's got multiple forms like a common Rider. It seems like he's in money. There's also the sequel novel The King of Kings, Gal Gagar vs. Better Man. Remember how I said this show is technically a Gal Gagar sequel? Well, this thing remembers. I've never read it, so no promises on the quality. It was adapted into a manga that looks kind of cool, but I haven't read that either. Oh, and it showed up in Super Robot Wars, but you know, Sunrise. That was a given. In the end, 
most people don't care about Better Man, and I can't understand why. For everything it does right, it does something horribly wrong. And the story is so unnecessarily complicated, most people wouldn't bother to put up with it. And yet, I have a soft spot for it. Or at least it's ideas. I mean, a guy who henshins into a cool dragon punching monsters while Jaegers provide backup? That's one of the most metal things I've ever heard of. I'll probably never rewatch this thing, but I did have fun while it lasted. And if I had fun with it, somebody else probably will too, so it's worth chatting about in my book. Just don't expect it to make sense. I'm Click Diggums. Thanks for watching. If you want more, like, subscribe, comment, etc. Peace.